Hey everybody, welcome to the Tournament Center. I am Zach Hill along with deck builder extraordinaire <laughs> Conley Woods here to talk to us about Night Pod. Conley, what is this deck? Uh, so it's basically Malyra Pod, which is uh -huh. a pretty uh, big staple of the format. I would say everyone knows about right. it. Uh, with a small, a couple small innovations, including neither Reliquary, uh, which just gives you a, uh, a lot more robust of a fair game when it comes to that, basically. And it increases your uh, your toolbox package, which basically the entire deck is a toolbox as is, and you just get a little bit of extra with it. What you mean when you say that is you get to play more one ofs. Yeah, you I get you, you play a ton of like one ofs, and you're basically uh, you're searching them up at various times whenever they would be the most effective. Uh, so your deck can play out very differently every single game. Totally. So let's take a look at that deck and see how it plays out. If we can go ahead and look at some of these slides, we see four Birds of Paradise, two Noble Hierarch, two Knights of the Reliquary, and three Abrupt Decay, one of your only non-creatures. This is kind of the core of the deck, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Abrupt Decay is just very good in the format. Not, not much to say there. And then we basically it's producing mana and uh, and have a little bit of trickiness from Knight of the Reliquary. Let's just do things like have Bajuka Bog in the main deck, which it, it adds a lot of versatility to what you kind of already have going on. Okay, so that's kind of the fair element of the deck. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at some of the unfair <laughs> things to do. We see uh, three copies of Birthing Pod, four Court of Calling. Now, Court of Calling, kind of an awkward card. The deck called Pod, yet you're only playing three Pods and four Chords. Yeah. Why is that? Pod's been a unanimous four of in this deck for a very long time, but in a metagame where Wild Nakato's attacking you, uh, you can't really play it on turn three and activate it on turn four and take four damage and expect that to work out, because you're just you're bolting yourself, basically, and you can't afford to do that against aggro decks. And it's a little clunky to draw, too, uh, whereas Quarter Calling kind of gives you this robust instant speed interaction that a lot of decks uh, don't expect, and uh, if you ever draw two, you basically just set up your combo at the end of their turn and then on your turn, so it acts just like a birthing pod would in that case, where you activate birthing pod over two turns. So, kind of just mix it up a little bit, want to take a little less damage, and be instant speed, basically. Sure. So, Conley mentioned his combo. There's actually a couple of <laughs> couple those in the deck. Let's take a look at one of the first ones. We see Malira Viscera Seer to go with the four Kitchen Finks and Murderous Red Cat. Yep. Can you just walk us through real quick how this combo works? So, it's pretty simple. The Persist Mechanic, uh, when a creature dies, comes back with a minus one, minus one counter. Uh, Malira says, basically, creatures can't have minus one, minus one counter. So when they come back, that minus one, minus one counter is not there. And persist, that's the only thing it cares about. So you can continue to s sacrifice a Kitchen Finks to whatever effect over and over again, and it will keep re-entering play, gaining you an absurd amount of life, whatever <laughs> amount you want. And with Murderous Redcap, you're doing the same thing, but going to the face. Uh, and Viscerous here is the cheapest and most kind of good sacrifice effect. I would say you can tutor up a Ranger Vios, which is nice. Sure. And the Scry effect comes in a lot of the times when you're, because you're a combo deck, so looking at the top two cards at the end of your opponent's turn and putting them at the bottom could be very relevant. Yeah, you literally scry into your combo pieces. So that's not the only combo nope. in the deck. If we can take a look at the next slide, we've got a whole nother way of gaining infinite life <laughs> and making your creatures use. So tell us how this works right here. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, Archangel Thune has a special ability. It's kind of a rare one. Basically, whenever you gain life, everything you control gets a plus one, plus one counter, and Spike Feeder happens to remove plus one, plus one counters for life. So that little thing interacts in gaining you infinite life, and every single other creature you have in play gets gigantic. Just in case you need to uh, kill, say, a Splinter Twin opponent who doesn't care about you having infinite life, you actually produce a gigantic threat, and then you can attack them for lethal. <laughs> so it actually works out. Uh, this is one you cord up almost exclusively, oh, okay. uh, just because potting to, to five is a little tough, but it definitely comes up quite often. All right, so if you're not comboing your opponent out, there are other ways to play a game of Magic with even more one ofs. Uh, I kind of view this, uh, Conley, as like the traditional <laughs> toolbox. You've got a way to hit the graveyard, a way to neuter your opponent's activated abilities, a way to blow up artifacts and enchantments, and a way to kill stuff. Yes. <laughs> Why did we choose these four cards in uh, particular? Basically, the, the format's very unfair right now. A lot okay. of combo decks and very aggressive decks running around. Um, so these kind of give you a way to interact in the main deck, where most, most decks would have to run these types of cards in their sideboard. But because they're only taking up one slot in a deck like this, one, one of your uh, slots out of your 60 cards, uh, because you have so much access to tutor for them with uh, Birthing Pod or Quarter Calling, you get these really powerful effects that you generally don't see in game one situations that can occasionally just beat a deck all on its own because they're not expecting it. If you get out of Linvala against uh, an opposing Birthing Pod list or a Splinter Twin list, they don't really expect that in game one, and right. now they have to deal with this 3-4 flyer before they can continue to go off. So those are kind of your silver bullets or your answers. Let's take a look at the next slide. Just more one-off goodness. This is kind of your card advantage package. A little bit, uh, if you have to play as a 
a mid-range deck without a combo. You see Eternal Witness, Voice, Revelark, Ranger of Eos, but these do kind of fit into the combo too. Yeah, right? uh, Ranger of Eos tutors up uh, Viscera Seer, which is very important, so you can pod a three-mana uh, three creature into a four-mana creature and still get your Viscera Seer, which is nice. <laughs> um, Eternal Witness and Revelark uh, help ensure that if they do answer your combo, because you only want one Malyra and one Viscera Seer mm -hmm. in this list, so if they lightning bolt your Malyra, for example, right. you still want to be able to combo off later in the game. So a thing like Revelark can just get, get your combo back online and, and win. Um, and these also are just great in any type of fair matchup. When you're playing against a control deck sure. and they have, you know, Supreme Verdict or whatever, you just want to be able to, you know, get a gigantic creature off Voice of Resurgence or get back two things off Revelark and, you know, continue on your merry way. Awesome. So that's kind of both fair and unfair at the same time. Let's take a look at the next slide. These are kind of just <laughs> the remaining cards. Yeah. I guess I grouped two mana defenders. <laughs> you got Walroots Spell Sky. Just very quickly, what are yeah. these cards? Walroots just basically the third Noble Hierarch makes mana great with Quarter Calling because he produces two mana by tapping and, and making a green. And Spell Sky's, again, a really good, uh, strong card against a lot of unfair decks. Totally. Uh, Splinter Twin, Boggles, things like that. They really can't even do what they want to do while it's in play, so it's just another must-answer threat that people don't really expect to see in game one. Right. Uh, an enchantment, when it's on the stack, has a target, yeah. so you can just redirect that to Spell Sky. Also protects your creatures since you're a creature yeah. combo deck. Okay, yeah. right, let's take a look at some of the lands in this deck. Now, the deck is called Night Pod. <laughs> I guess this is some of the stuff that you do with Knight of the Reliquary. How did we choose these four utility lands? Uh, basically, I wanted uh, a way to interact with the graveyard in game one. Bajuka Ball is extremely powerful. Uh, Knight of the Reliquary allows you to do it at instant speed, which is uh, very important. If you just play a Bajuka Ball against Sorcery Speed on your turn, sometimes it'll do what you want it to do, but oftentimes you want to get them mid-combo or something, mm -hmm. and Knight of the Reliquary allows that. Horizon Canopy is basically a free roll. You just get to, <laughs> you get to draw a card in the late game when you have too many lands. You can't uh. complain about that. Uh, Ghost Quarter is very important against decks like Affinity, who are, have a lot of uh, uh, creature lands, or uh, any type of uh, deck that needs its lands to win, so a Valakut deck, for mm -hmm. example, or Escape Shift. And then Gavney Township is actually a card that's been in the deck for a very long time as like a two or a three of, right. uh, because it resets your Kitchen Finks, giving them Persist sure. again, resets your Murder Swipe, giving them Persist again, and it just wins late games, like you just keep pumping your creatures, your Bird's Paradise become real creatures. And with neither Relic in the deck, I was able to cut down to one of those and then just grab it when I need it. Makes sense. Okay, so uh, let's look at how you actually cast all of these spells in the first place. You've obviously got, much like many other decks in the format, you've got your sack lands. You've also got, if we can look at the next slide, the dual lands that you use or that you get with these. Uh, if we can take a look at those really quick, you've got, uh, I believe, what, Temple Garden, Overgrown Temple Garden, tomb. uh, two Overgrown Tombs, one Godless Shrine, then some basics. Um, just you don't want to take too much damage against Zeus, so you have to keep that in mind. Totally. And uh, so those do deal you damage. There are some lands that don't. Forest, Swamp, you need a lot of basics yep. in case someone paths you or ghost quarters Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Uh, Razor Verge Thicket casts your Bird of Paradise. And on you the have first a Birds turn. of Paradise to fix your mana as well, so basics totally. don't hurt nearly as much. Forest turns into Bird of Paradise, which turns into everything. So. And you can fetch Swamp with Verdant Catagombs and Marsh Flats. Which is important for the sideboard, which we'll get right. to in a second. And uh, let's take a look at that <laughs> sideboard. Conley, you're amazing at the transition. <laughs> and uh, we see in typical Conley fashion, four Thoughtseize and a lot of one-ups. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's going on here, and why is Thoughtseize so important that uh, it gets four slots? Thoughtseize is so important just because of its versatility. It comes in against every combo, well, not every combo deck, a lot of the combo decks, okay. uh, way to interact with them, great against control as well. And that thought, that Swamp will grab a lot of times with the Verdant Catacombs to take less damage because turn one, breaking for a shock land and thought Seizing yourself for five damage can be a little scary sometimes. Um, and then all the one ofs are basically just an extension of everything we have in the main deck. Okay. Uh, all these cards could theoretically be in the main deck if you gotcha. if you decided that that was uh, a matchup you needed to help for. But these all come in. Uh, I just played against Affinity, for example, and Kataki, Harmonic Sliver. These are very important cards right. you bring in. And because you have seven tutor effects, they aren't really one ofs. They're really like an eight of in your deck, which is very good. Sick. All right. Uh, it's Conley Woods with Night Pod, I guess Malira Pod, <laughs> yeah, Malira Spike Pod. Feet pod, some sort of pod deck. Anyway, this is Zach Hill at the Tournament Center. Let's send it back to Rich.